wraith in the house? <laughs> a wraith would there never stop away. That's so cool. Where's the other one? Oh, yeah! Wraiths. Wraiths are welcome here. You're very welcome. Oh, there's a little mini wraith. That's cool. Mini wraith. <laughs> Tom. So generally, uh, we think that opening it up for your questions reveals far more uh, telling stories than we would ever be willing to give you. <laughs> we'll start over here. Now my question is for Robin. Oh my <laughs> Where's God, here? First. <laughs> Other way. Oh, All right. way over there. Hold on, before you, before, oh, I think, I think we need to, I need a micro, oh, that's better. I like the sound of my own voice now. Um, can, can you say your character name too, before you ask your question? I'm dressed as uh, Atlas uh, from Jack Kirby from Action Comics. Sweet. I thought you were asking me, Chris, I was like, uh, Will Zimmerman, we've been working together for years. <laughs> Who? Zimmerman. I know why they didn't give me a working microphone now. <laughs> yes, please, please. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, which uh, hurt more? Losing the Constellation Award by a single vote last year, or losing the Constellation Award to Canadian <laughs> this year, and then receiving your Constellation Constellation Award last week in Toronto? <laughs> to ask you a question in response to that question. Why you gotta be so hurtful, man? Why you gotta remind me that I'm a loser twice? Okay, you know what? I don't know. Uh, Robin's parents... Atlas? Atlas? I'll give you 20 bucks afterwards. That was cool. Rob, Robin's parents are here and that was just a little bit embarrassing. So, sorry, I'm, I'm They don't know I'm a loser. <laughs> Actually, who am I kidding? They don't... <laughs> Anyway, um, no, it, it feels it feels uh, it feels equally awful both times. And thank you for bringing up such a painful subject <laughs> to start to start the Q and A. Thank you. <coughs> See the support we get on set. This is the support we get. <laughs> and Hi. awkward silence. Hi, I have a question for Amanda. Over the years, we've seen you as a, uh, an actress, uh, producer, uh, director. Do you think one day you will see you as a writer, as an episode or a book or anything? Uh, I, uh, <laughs> perhaps not, since I can't speak English. Um, I don't know. I, I write um, short stories, but I, I, scripts terrify me. I write a heck of a good speech. And I'm good at toasting, but um, scripts for some reason terrify me, which is so weird. But I, I, I don't know. I would like to try my hand at it, but I would, um, uh, I bow down before the writers that I work with, and I could never do as good a job as they do. But eventually, when you know, all my other options run out, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amanda's also really good at writing checks, or our paychecks. She's really good at doing that. Hi, this question is for Robin. I'd like to know what is it going to be a hurtful question? Because the first one really has damaged me. No, okay, I just want to know I, I, right now. Yes, I promise. And who's your be character? Next? I just want to know. My parents are here. For <laughs> Robin. I just want to know whatever happened to Bill's glasses. He doesn't wear them anymore. He got LASIK eye correction surgery. <laughs> Magnus did it. I think Magnus was like... Biggie, Biggie helped out. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, you know what? We love you, but the dorky glass has got to go. He was like, I thought they were cool, but no. Yeah, so he has perfect vision. The glasses have been done before on a... <laughs> what do you mean? What, like, what, what other show... Are you... It's just so 1997. <laughs> I 
I just like to say that um, it's really nice. It's a comfortable environment for me. This this sort of um, abuse that I'm taking because this is this is what I go through every day on sanctuary, the set of sanctuary. So thank you for making me feel at home, everyone here. Thank you very much. Or work. Hunter, look, Hunter, he's just like sleeping. He's like, oh god. Just from watching the show, it seems like things are probably low-key off once the camera's not rolling. What's it really like on the set when things are not being taped? Um, we're all raging idiots. <laughs> as soon as the cameras turn off, in fact, when they turn on, um, we're, we're the goofiest cast I've ever worked with. And that's saying a lot. <laughs> I'd like to do my impression of somebody on this panel <laughs> who, <coughs> how this person acts when the camera's not rolling and when it is rolling. <laughs> Aren't you like that, Chris? <laughs> so not like that. <laughs> You're so silly. So I have been faithfully buying your season iTunes, and I love it because each time one comes out, I get a new episode. Um, but is there any way we can get a hold of the special features for those of us who have been purchasing as it's been happening? <laughs> Buy the DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a great question, actually. That's I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> special features on iTunes. More money. Yeah, it's a great Never idea. Never give a man a pen and a piece of paper. <laughs> Because I get things done. That's a great idea. Yeah, we've only ever uh, released them on the DVDs, but heck, yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. And on that subject, sorry. She's a good writer. <laughs> on that subject, and I think it's probably something we shouldn't be talking about here, but we will, because we're all friends. Um, every year there's a, there's a blooper reel that goes out to, to, to on the DVDs, but there's also another blooper reel that never makes it out to anywhere. And I think you guys really should see that. You should write to the office and ask to see the really good blooper reel. The blooper reel, the blooper reel that gets shown at the uh, rap party is not necessarily the same blooper reel that you get on your DVDs. You made it to sign a waiver. But it's None of you are on the internet, right? So, uh, we're pretty yeah. safe. Oh, well, what? You just write letters and send it with postage stamps and stuff. Yeah, so, okay. I believe we call it the interweb. 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 Would all the geeks who, who go on the interweb please not leave this room? one um, plot that you guys would really like for your individual characters to sort of have in like coming seasons that they haven't already had? Chris? Chris? <laughs> oh, uh, in upcoming seasons, any plot at all? <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's a dry sense of humor, but we love it. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> um, I, I would, I would, I mean, I would really love to go uh, back in time. Um, I, I would like to do more. Yeah, I would like to do uh, some of the most exciting stuff that we did in, in season three um, was when we went back back in time. You bring back the five, you see how others do the or, or, or the five and a half. 
which isn't a short joke about Ian Tracy, but uh, you know, because he was almost the five, it was almost the six, really. And so, um, uh, so the six or the or the five or as many as we can uh, to get them together and see more of the early adventures of Magnus and her crew of of rock and dudes. You know, Chris, I just like to say I, I, I really wish you all the best on that back, like a back in time thing, and, and you know that'll be that would be some great episodes there. Yeah, but you're, great. maybe your no, no, dad no, would I, be I, there. I understand. Right? I understand. I understand what you're saying. You're like, you know, just go back in time and like have all these great times back in the 1800s. You know, me and Henry would be back in the sanctuary, you know, playing Angry Birds. <laughs> <laughs> what level are you guys on Angry Birds? <laughs> Two. I, I actually have to say that I I agree. That I, I love the backstory. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love uh, the, Helen's backstory, John's backstory. Will not so much because we know his backstory, but <laughs> we see his backstory. His backstory, backstory back sides. Yeah, but I, I I would like to see what happened. <laughs> and sort of do our, our little twist on revisionist history. And, but we've also talked about the idea of it, if we were able to go back in time to take Will on that journey. Yeah, don't and, clean it up now. <laughs> Sorry, like, you know. We, we actually talked, we, we're not going to talk about it anymore, but we did. And what is this thing? You broke it. You broke the um, <laughs> Uh, but we, I, I love the idea of revisionist history in the show. I love the idea of taking historical figures and sort of turning them on their ear. It was just a fake out. It wasn't even a real butt. This is like a piece of gum. <laughs> um, so. Go ahead, go ahead. Wait, was he like this as a child? <laughs> So for, for me, for Helen, I would love to see sort of more what makes this crazy eccentric woman tick. Tick. Hey! We're just fixing stuff up here. I'm glad you were all here to see that. <laughs> to know he's a disgusting, disgusting man. Um, I too uh, would like to see a plot where uh, all the other people in the sanctuary go back in time, because then there, w then there would have to be an episode with just you know those of us who are like left in present boring time at the sanctuary, and, and I think it would go something like this. You know, just like me, Henry, and, and Biggie just dancing around. <laughs> Naked. <laughs> Swimming with the mermaid. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Come on, don't tell me you don't know what I'm talking about. You guys have all know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Awkward silence. That's what that is. La question suivante. Uh, I have a question to uh, Amanda Tapping. Uh, the difference between Sam and Magnus aren't very severe. They're almost like the same people, other than the hair. So, <laughs> but which one is your favorite and why? And also, can you speak British through the rest of this uh, panel? Right. Uh, I can't really say that I have a favorite because Sam really British the whole time? <laughs> Let me just answer this question. In American. Uh, Sam is such a uh, special part of my life, of my career, of, of my family. It's just such a... Um, so I can't, I can't say that I, there's a favorite, but I would say that these two are very different. Um, Sam lived within the realm of the military and functioned very well under that hierarchy. She understood how it worked, she felt comfortable in it, 
uh, definitely a forward thinker and, and definitely pushed the envelope within her career, but was, was very comfortable functioning in a military hierarchy, whereas... <laughs> do, do, do you see what I have to put up with? <clears throat> whereas Magnus would never function in that. The woman who signs your paychecks. Uh, whereas Magnus would never function in that society. She is, she thinks so far outside the box, she makes autonomous decisions that seem sometimes very egomaniacal and... I know, right? It's such a weird thing to say, but... Um, so they're, they're very different, and I wouldn't say that I have a favorite. Sam was perfect for me at that time in my life. She was an amazing character to play, and I would revisit her any time. But Magnus, to me, is this wonderful enigma. She is, uh, she's kind of perfect for where I'm at now in my life, where it's just, I, I don't get her, and it's such a challenge and an exploration. So I can't say that I have a favorite. They've just been perfect for where I've been at in my life. And I came into my own, I think, as a woman at the same time as Sam did. Like, we kind of grew up together, so. And Magnus is so old. <laughs> Eventually I'll get there, but. <laughs> With the help of the sanguine vampires. <laughs> but yeah, I, I couldn't say I, that I have a favorite. But thank you very much for your question. And thank you. Hi, this is for Amanda. Um, first time I'm <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> say, uh, thank you for Sanctuary for Kids. That's awesome. And uh, my question is... Can you speak um, in your out outdoor voice? Um, this is my outdoor voice. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the, my question is, um, I read somewhere that at one point Henry's character was kind of on the edge, whether they're going to take him out or not. So my question is, was Helen always destined to lose a child? Was it going to be Ashley or Henry or... Was that wow, always in wow. there? I, I never heard that the Henry was on the bubble story before. I, ne I never... He was going to be taken out, like, for a walk? Yeah. <laughs> he might take he him out for dinner yeah. or to a movie, but there was never, in, in, uh, as one of the people who helps steer the destiny of the show, there was never a... Was that something you were plotting? <laughs> there was never any thought of taking Henry out. No, 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 no. So... <laughs> <laughs> Whoever you're paying for information, I stop paying them because I, uh, the I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if Helen was destined to lose a child. It was. It, it's something that's resonated really strongly with the series and, and certainly with my character and with me. But I don't know that it was. It, so often we are given about a month before we actually start shooting, when our financing finally comes in and the writers can get in the room. So, in as much as we think we have these great lofty ideals for each season, we're usually scrambling like crazy monkeys to try to get it together. And although Damian Martin and I will have many discussions prior to the start of the season, and occasionally the writers will get on the phone, that the actual plot lines are, are, are pretty... You took them sock off. <laughs> Where did my sock? Oh. <laughs> I just I just take the sock off. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might get siffy. <laughs> so I wait. You've, you've made the microphone all flaccid now. What have you done? Uh, I just like to also just in in, in comment uh, uh, comment on that last question. Um, just like to make a clear statement that I think it's disturbing to to sort of mention Henry as in the realm of one of Magnus's children. He is a, a dog. 
Hunter, I'm sorry. I mean, he's asleep. He doesn't. He's that's, so yeah. I, that's that's kind of a disturbing. When Amanda was talking, he was quite wide awake actually. Yeah, I, I I have that effect on animals and, and humans. Fell asleep when you started talking. It was strange. Did, Did I guess he jokes even wrong? come close to answering your question? <laughs> No, all right. Sorry about that. We just told you you had bad information and moved on from there. I'd uh, just like to say, kia ora from New Zealand. Came all the way to see you guys, so. Yeah! Feel well. yeah. Uh, north, north, north or South Island? Uh, north Island. I live in the Hawke's Bay, wine okay. country. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, hopefully see you two guys there one day. I hear Amanda's coming in. I'll Do you have any of that wine with you, darling? <laughs> they wouldn't let me with it on the plane. <laughs> But my question is, while you were shooting in front of the green screen, was there ever a moment where you felt just so totally stupid? <laughs> <laughs> there was a time when we were running from the basilisk in Hollow Earth. Yes. <laughs> and, well, first of all, I had to smell the poo. <laughs> And then, and then we did the scene where running from this basilisk with this crazy tail, and and I had to run like a, do this wide circle around it to try to distract it so it would get away from Robin, and I felt a little bit dumb. And we, we and also, and I, I think again, I want to prepare you for the next statement I'm going to make because it might be a little bit gauche, but we were also running away from the creatures. Ejaculate. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was this weird thing where the creature was like spewing out this, and our special effects guys had these guns with this stuff. And the, and I, it just, <laughs> there was so many parts of it that felt weird. And I will say there was one other time when uh, Polly Walker and I were on the uh, edge of the big slug, <laughs> cutting into it. And, as you do. As you do. <laughs> and Polly and I were a little bit weirded out by that. She's lovely, but we were both like, really? And you want me to reach in and, yeah. <laughs> and come up with this thing? And hey. So there, there have been a couple of times, but for the most part, no. It's wonderful. There, there, are, there are many times on, on Sanctuary where I'm, I'm, I'm doing these, these things that Amanda's just described, and I just think to myself, wow, if I had gone to law school, I could be a partner by now. <laughs> Nobody would have hired me as their lawyer, let's just face it, so. I have a question for all three of you. Uh, are there any good pranks that you pulled on each other on set that you can share with us? Um, pranks. It's probably, it's probably very serious, actually. There's never been any pranks We played. don't have any fun. We don't. Who told you that? We are a very, very serious group. <laughs> I think for me the best was when Robin was directing and Ryro and I ordered a balloonogram. Nice. And okay, so the idea I went through, Ryan and I were like, what are we gonna do? We gotta do something crazy. So I went I went on the internet and I found balloonograms. And I saw this guy, Lucky Leonard, and he had this big shamrock, and I thought, oh he's Irish, this is great, because Robin, Irish, funny. And so I sent this whole list of crazy things about Robin, you know, dropping his pants and all this stuff. And <laughs> He came, and I fully expected that he would do some like Irish jig, or and he sang "I Feel Good," James Brown, with a harmonica, and like, James Brown is Irish. In front of me. And so it was supposed to be this great, funny, like Irish leprechauny kind of guy comes into the room and embarrasses Robin in front of the entire crew. He's got balloons, and it's funny. And he came in, and he. Harmonica, I feel good. And we were like, not Irish, but there's nothing Irish about the man. And he wasn't small, he was very tall and thin, and I, I kind of wanted a little leprechaun, but anyway. I thought he was racist. But, racist. But the look on Robin's face, priceless. This guy walks in, and he's just like, he's got balloons there, and. He's got like a funny little top hat and he's playing harmonica and singing James Brown and I, 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 I was terrified. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is it. And then I just, you know, it was, it got really awkward. And you dropped your pants. I dropped my pants. Because that's what I do when I'm nervous. It's like... <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I don't wear underwear 
on Fridays. So. Oh. We were at the Leo. We were at the Leo. We were at the, the, this, just to give you an example, I mean, he drops his pants everywhere. Except here, thank goodness. But he, that's all because of Dragon Con TV. Um, but we were at the, uh, the, the Leo's uh, on the red carpet. And he dropped his pants. In front of a reporter. In front of a reporter. Like he was being interviewed and he dropped his <laughs> And he was wearing this classy, beautiful suit and he looked fantastic. And then all of a sudden he was like, all right. Eh. <laughs> now, my two colleagues, my esteemed colleagues here on the panel, have painted you a picture that makes it, you know, in, in the light that it's a negative thing <laughs> to drop your pants on any occasion. What do you guys think? People take their pants off all the time, okay? It's a human, it's a human condition. And I'm just, I'm a mirror holding up the mirror to the humans in the, in, in the audience who take their pants off, because everyone does it, okay? Thank you. Yeah. Except Robin Dunn takes his pants off two legs at a time. I don't think our wraith in the audience would take their pants off, I'm just saying. So you've excluded. But they're not you. Bless the wraith. They Bless might, the they might. All right, I, I would ask. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. You do need to see it in person to judge, but Robin's parents are here, so that's true. <laughs> don't leave. Please don't leave. Don't leave. Jack, don't leave. Don't leave me, Jack. Sorry, they diapered them. That, that's true. They still diaper me. Okay? Still. It's embarrassing, but it's true. That's why they're here. Darling, the microphone is erect again. What have you done? Awkward silence. That's what that is. Oh, hello. Hello. Uh, thank you for being here. And hello from Wisconsin. Um, I wanted to ask all three of you, was there ever a point in either your younger lives or recently where you decided that what you were doing is it? I mean, that is, you were going to do this, you were going to do this until you possibly couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> I, I, I think what we're doing now, like not right this second now, although this is fantastic, but uh, for me, like I, I have moments on the sanctuary set where I can't imagine being anywhere else professionally. I mean, in my personal life, yes, but professionally, I, I can't imagine doing anything but being on that set. And of course, that's the nature of the business where it changes and you have to evolve, but for me, yeah, I, I've literally had moments where I'm like, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. Absolutely. I mean, that's the, the, the great thing about the great thing about the, this job is that we get to we get to play for work. But the, there's there's no better job than going in with people who you get along with, you enjoy their company, and this this isn't just the, the your fellow actors. The the crew that we have on this show, they've been a lot of them have been with Amanda from the beginning of Stargate. And this is the, the uh, you know, another testament to Amanda, to, to Martin, to George, um, to Damien. I mean, people, these guys love working. We love working for our bosses. And, and so to, to go into this job is pretty phenomenal on, in, in every aspect. So, yeah, it doesn't get much better. You know, it's, it sounds such a, like a corny thing to say, and I say it all the time, and I, I, I shudder when I hear it come out of my mouth, because it does sound totally corny, but we really are a family. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There's vomit, there's vomit bags under your seats. Um, but, you know, it, it, we work so many hours. Those, the, those are the police coming in. I yeah, hear this a guy with no pants on. <laughs> um, but it, it really, you know, we work so many hours, we spend so much time together all the time, and it, it really is a miracle that all of us, and like Chris says, it's not just the cast, it's, it's the crew, it's everybody. We all get along so well, we have such a great time, and, and we're, we're, so, we're so blessed to be able to do what we do, and, and the fact that, you know, I, I, I get to spend every day, all day with my best friends, and they 
have to put up with me. You know, the family is like, they, they can't, they, there's nothing, they, oh, there, there's his ass again. Okay, well, we can't, there's nothing we can do. We, we're, his, we're his family. No, but it's, it's, we have a lot of fun, and, and uh, it's, 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 really, it's really a wonderful thing. It's really, we want to keep doing it, I think. Hello. Um, I understand that Jonathan Young has a lot of stuff that keeps him from being a, like a regular cast member on more often, but within the world of Sanctuary, Nikola Tesla's kind of an evil genius, and Magnus just sort of lets him go about his merry way. Why? <laughs> mm, that's such a good question. <laughs> uh, you're actually going to see a lot more of the friendship between Magnus and Tesla this season. Yeah, I'm so thrilled. Um, I think that they have, to know people for that long, I, I mean, it's inconceivable, because none of us have lived that long, but to, to have one of your best friends in your life for over 150 years and to be able to um, trust them so implicitly and know ultimately at the heart that they're not going to do anything so stupid that it would hurt you. I mean, they may do a lot of stupid things that will annoy you, but... <laughs> Um, I think that there's just such a level of trust, but there's been an interesting sort of development and it's really in the playing. Uh, it's not that the, anything has been written any differently for Jonathan and I, but there's just been an interesting development in how we've been playing some of the scenes and you'll see a lot of that in season four and you'll sort of go, oh. And we've added a couple of like, I've ad-libbed a couple of lines and so has Jonathan that kind of changed the track of the relationship between Magnus and Tesla. And it, it's kind of cool that we get the, the chance to do that, but, um, well, you'll see. <coughs> Watch season four. Hi, I just wanted to find out what upcoming projects you might have beyond um, Sanctuary. Uh, well, it's funny, actually, that you mentioned that, because I, I had a wish uh, in, in the um, uh, Supernatural panel. Woo! And the wish actually came true. It's crazy. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm doing a, um, a Western for AMC called Hell on Wheels. Uh, it's uh, premiering November 6th, so anybody who's into Westerns should check this out. And um, uh, AMC doesn't really have very many good shows on their channel, but I think this one might, this one might uh, raise the bar. Um, so, you know, the odds are that it'll be a good show. And it's a great group of people. And um, uh, Colin Meany. Is it for any of you who are in your call me? And um, he was one of my more favorite people to, to do scenes with on, on, on the series. So I'm doing that, and it's, it's an absolute blast. It's a wonderful, complex, interesting, bizarre, crazy character, and and, uh, and he hangs out in the in 1856. Hold, hold on a second. I just want to. You play bizarre, crazy character. You. Christopher Hairdall. What have you done with Christopher Hairdall? Okay. He's left the building. Hi, <laughs> this is another oh, I'm, iTunes I'm question. Asleep. I'm asleep. Yes. Yes, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> this is another iTunes question. Uh -huh. I have to drive a lot for my job, and the iTunes podcast save me when I have to drive. Right Are they coming back? Because you only did two for season three. <laughs> I know, we got really, really busy and uh, and it got a bit crazy, but I think what might happen is during the off season, we will do podcasts for season four. Because uh, we, A, we have a ridiculous amount of fun doing them. I don't know if you can tell <laughs> that we're having fun while we do them, but um, uh, I think that during this off season, we should definitely be doing podcasts for season four. Um, and maybe revisit some of season three because yeah, we just season three was huge and crazy and so busy and every time we turned around it was like do you have, guys have time to do a podcast and it's like can we do it in 20 minutes no I and mean, we can't so it just it got a bit busy but yeah we'd love to thank you i'm gonna write that down <laughs> on special features on itunes podcasts it says pick up pick up a double double <laughs> Crawler. Milk, apples. <laughs> um, hi, uh, my question is for Christopher. Um, Can you come over here? Who's talking? Is, is that you over here? Hi. Okay, it's hard to, it's hard to tell. Sorry. Yes, I know, I'm so short. I just want to make sure that I'm not going, yes, yeah, so what's your question? <laughs> um, we 
we've seen a lot of your character um, interact in many different ways with Magnus over the seasons. Um, first kind of as an enemy, and then as a sort of, kind of, sometimes ally. Uh, so I was just kind of wondering... Yes. <laughs> Always done with love. <laughs> I was kind of wondering where you see that going in the future. I'm sorry, my, my compatriot here, my, my compatriot whom I love, spoke just the very the, the climax of your of your question. Okay, um, I was kind of wondering where you see that going because we've had with the whole energy monster came out. He was really a nice character, so I was kind of wondering if maybe nice John was going to come back. <laughs> Nice John is always there. Sometimes he loses the battle with evil John. Um, I, I, what we're going to see in, in season four is a side of uh, Magnus and a side of Druid that we've really never seen before. Uh, an expression of their relationship that I, I think will be... Um, Explosive. <laughs> Explosive. Yeah, I think you'll, I think you'll enjoy it. So, um, is that the first or second? I mean, first. first. It's the first episode, and uh, and so you definitely want to watch the first episode because you, you're going to get uh, a lot of surprises in many relationships. Oh, I, I'd love to tell you more. It's fantastic. Um, and yeah. <laughs> Because you're in the first episode too, in a way. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, no. Yeah. Well, we'll no, talk about that. No. Oh, wait, because you're not, because every, oh, wait, because it's the different time. Yeah. Yeah, right, okay, yeah, yeah. You're back in the sanctuary, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we go back in time. Chris, in I don't episode, think you understand how unattractive and, um, Kate is. He's in the sanctuary. <laughs> I just like to rub that in. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> uh, this question is for Amanda, since she's the one in charge. <laughs> I was wondering, is there any chance we might see Tara Rottery make an appearance on this? Oh, show? I'd love to. We actually, uh, yeah. we actually, there was a part that I thought Tara would be great for, but she was shooting something else, and so we couldn't use her. Um, so, yeah, let's hope for season, what did we, we just finished for five? Let's hope for season five. Woo! I'd love to have her on the show. Woo! I would love to, of course. Turtle! Yeah, Turtle. Turlene and Minnie back in action. Woo! Hi guys, thanks. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you guys for continuing to produce great sci-fi. Um, and uh, my question is more of a producing one. Does the immense amount of uh, like green screen and artificial areas, does that actually reduce your costs or does that increase your costs? I think it actually sort of balances out. Um, it's a pretty level playing field once you go from rendering full 3D sets in a computer and building full 3D sets uh, by hand, uh, I think it there's a, it actually balances out. The one thing that Sanctuary does really well is we'll take our sets that we've built, our, our real sets, and recycle them over and over and over again. Um, you know, hence Cush becomes Requiem and things like that where we'll, we'll take a set and, and repurpose it. So we do that a lot on our show. We reduce, reuse, and recycle. Which, which is really, which is really pretty much unheard of in, in television. If yeah. you, you go by any uh, production house and as soon as an episode is done, that set, beautiful wood that can be reused again, is just taken up and pitched into the dumpster. Uh, so this is, yeah, it's really remarkable. Yeah, we're really conscientious about that. But I would say, um, especially this season, I would say it probably balanced out. We had some pretty big builds this season and again, we, we reused a lot of our sets and, and repurposed them, but I, I would say it balances out. There really is, once you, because of the nature of our show and, and the fact that this year we probably did about 60, 65% green screen, it, it balances out pretty well. If you ask Lee Wilson from Anthem Visual <laughs> Effects, he will say something completely different. <laughs> but I will say <laughs> that it balances out. He will say it costs a lot more to render sets in a computer with 70 artists. No, he'll say it like this. <laughs> and um, I've, got, I've got one more. Um, Will's girlfriend, like, he, he seems to have really bad luck. Are, are, are we going to get to see this one stay? or uh... <laughs> <laughs> Just art imitating life, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, uh, Saint Cynthia, loved it. Thank you. Uh, will we get to see Abby stay? Uh, yeah, we will. We will get to see her stay a little bit. Um, yeah, a little bit, a little bit of luck for old Willie, Willie Z. Um, not that kind of luck. I'm not talking about that. Uh, yes, I am talking about that kind of luck. Um, yeah, yeah, she'll she'll be she'll stick around foolishly on her part, but yeah, she'll she'll be around for a little bit. You know. We have a bit of a love affair with Pascal Hutton, who plays Abby, going on. She's just become such a great part of the family, so we're loath to, you know, you're stuck with her because we like her better than we like you. <laughs> Heard that before. I'd like to thank you all for coming and. I wanted to know if Amanda could talk a little bit about her charity, Sanctuary for Kids, and if she has any little spoilers on what we can expect in the upcoming auction. Thank you very much, um, and thanks for the opportunity to talk about it. I'll keep it as brief as I can, but I get pretty passionate and tend to ramble. Um, Sanctuary for Kids is doing phenomenally well. We've raised close to a quarter million dollars in the couple of years that we've been in existence. Well, I say we, I mean you. We uh, have just recently committed to some relief work in Somalia, working with Save the Children, who we have a relationship with from our work in Haiti uh, and Pakistan. So uh, we'll be doing, we'll be sending some funds there. We've also hooked up with two really amazing organizations in Haiti. The, the crazy thing that Haiti happened, the world went crazy, pledging money. It was fantastic, and then nothing has been done. Five percent of the rubble has been cleared in Haiti. Wow. Uh, it's ridiculous. People are still living in squalor in camps uh, with dysentery and a myriad of other very curable and preventable diseases happening. So we've hooked up with two groups that are on the ground doing really amazing work. One is a school that's working uh, with children and also providing meals for their community. Hot Meals, which is a rarity in places in Haiti. We're still committed to building military, or not military, medicinal outposts, so that, <laughs> wow, that came out real, just a little Sam Carter bubbled up there. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, we're also working with another group that does trauma counseling, which is something that you wouldn't think of necessarily as being, you know, they need food, they need water, but really in order to survive long term, something as traumatic as what happened in Haiti, and the aftermath, you need trauma counseling. You need to be able to prepare these people to move on with their lives and get their, you know, their feet back under them. So we're working with two really cool groups. The kids in Nepal are doing great. They're awesome, wonderful. I, I get these crazy little letters. Michael Hess, who runs the orphanage, uh, instead of mailing letters because the postal system in Nepal is <coughs> virtually non-existent, um, he'll email, he'll scan. The, the letters from the kids and then email them to me and I just I got one from a little girl Apsara who I think I've spoken about in my blogs and it said roses are red violets are blue uh, no roses are red my pen is blue I have one sister and it is you Aww. I know right I know it's crazy I love those kids and Jill and I are talking about trying to go back um, early next year uh, the Watari kids are doing great so uh, anyway I, I see I start to um, Sounds good to me. Uh, in terms of the upcoming auction, we're still putting it together. But what we are also doing on the site, and I encourage you all to contribute to this, um, we're putting together something which is basically all the things that the fans have done to support Sanctuary for Kids, whether it's coming to the cons or the little, you know, people have done like, pledge me while I snow, you know, while I ride a super slider down a mountain, or pledge me while I jump out of a plane, or pledge me while I do a car wash, or I've got a lemonade stand, my six-year-old is running a lemonade stand in our neighborhood. And so we're asking the fans to send in anything that they've done, because really this charity is about you. And uh, we just want to sort of pull together all these great stories of people who've just done what, like the little things that they can, and as we know, small ripples um, make a huge difference. So it'll drop in the bucket and big ripples emanate, and we're just, we're so proud of the fans. So we just really wanted to make the chick give it back to you and say, this is what everyone's doing, isn't it awesome? So check out sanctuaryforkids.org and, and see 
uh, you know, if you have any little stories, please share them with us, or pictures, or anything. Send a photo of yourself, and we're going to put together something really cool. Um, how, how come? driveway and selling it lemonade. <laughs> you never said that you know, I could be part of this. That was just creepy. <laughs> okay, so I was like, you know, I have my shirt tied up like this. And I was like, he looks good as Daisy Duke. He was wearing Daisy Duke's cowboy boots and, and a little tied up shirt and he was doing a, it wasn't a lemonade stand, let's be honest, it was a car wash. And it, it wasn't for sanctions. But there was lemonade there. <laughs> Awkward silence. That's the best one tonight. That is the best one tonight. I have a, crush, a question. For oh, thank Chris. goodness. When actors, when actors are asked questions, they say, "Do you like playing the more evil character or the good character?" But on Sanctuary, you're playing both characters: one essentially evil, one essentially good. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Oh, I thought this question was for Robert Dunn. Oh, sorry. Oh, Christopher Dunn. Oh, here we are. Uh, it's great. It's the best. It's the best possible scenario, really. Um, uh, I mean, Druid gets to play both sides of the coin anyway, simply because I was talking to somebody else about this. You know, all the evil characters are great because they can do evil things, and then they can do really good things. People are always oh, going to be okay. He's a nice. Oh, you know. <laughs> No, he's going to be, oh, look at how he did that. It was so nice when he did that. It was, oh, no. Okay, if he does something nice again, I'm not going to trust the fact. And that's, so that's great. And then Biggie is just this big-hearted, beautiful, caring cat that's got to... Except when he slaps you in the head. I don't think that's caring. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. But he does it with love. Could you do the, the Biggie grunt for us? There's a, uh, there's a, uh, who's it, Marty? It's Marty. Every time I, uh, he's one of our focus pullers. And basically we don't say anything to each other. Uh, we just walk by each other, I'll come in the morning, say, say good morning to, to, to the guys, and, and uh, well, I won't, of course, Biggie will. Uh, but Biggie will come in and, and say good morning to, to everybody, and then just walk over to Marty and go, <laughs> And Marty, Marty just looks at Biggie and goes, <laughs> You know what's so funny is Marty, every time I see him in the morning, I go, Marty? And he turns to me and goes, Doctor. <laughs> Love Marty. Marty's the best. It's another virtual set question. Um, do you guys feel that it's um, easier or more difficult for working on the virtual sets? And do you feel that it gives you more freedom in script writing because of location issues? There's definitely more freedom in script writing. You can go anywhere in the world, which is fantastic. So, I mean, the money saving doesn't isn't just for the, the sets, right? You also, you, if you're going to go to Mumbai, it's going to cost a fortune to bring everyone there. If you're going to go to right. Rome, it's going to cost exactly. a fortune. So that's part of the, that's a big part of the money saving. Yeah. Anyway, just to segue back to the last um, question. But I, 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 I've said this before in interviews, I love working on the green screen only because it, it feels like doing a very intimate theater scene. There's nothing, there's no tunery, it's tunery? Scenery to chew on. <laughs> tunery. I, like I actually like the tunery. <laughs> scenery that you want, so it's, uh, it's just becomes about the characters and what they're saying to each other. Please. But also, um, you know, it, it, we speak a lot of, we speak a lot about the, uh, the tunery, I mean the, uh, the visual effects on Sanctuary. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, I, I am speaking, I am speaking. Um, no, but we, we spend a lot of time talking about the visual effects on Sanctuary, and, and they are, for good reason, they are, they're amazing. Anthem Visual Effects does an amazing job, and, and, and like we've just mentioned, we can go anywhere in the world. But also the people who do our practical sets on the show are amazing. And, you know, we have this, we have this tiny, little, tiny little parking lot at the side of our, 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 our little studio in, in, in Vancouver. And what, what the, the people who have, the, the, the set deck people have been able to make that little parking lot into, uh, Mumbai, um, you know, 
it's World War II, France. Um, I mean, it's 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 truly it, yeah, the, it's it's truly amazing what you know what uh, you know. If if you guys are not going to take this seriously, then neither am I. <laughs> Um, but it's, it's just like, it's a beautiful sort of symbiotic relationship between the visual effects on the show and, and the practical sets and, and what they're able to do in, 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 in both cases. It's, it's actually truly amazing. <laughs> everyone's like, he said something serious. Oh, I know, that's weird. We don't want to do that. We're going to have the final two questions final and two. then wrap it up. Aww. Aww. Hello again, I'm the, the Kiwi. Again. Oh, yeah. um, I just wanted to ask, I'm not sure if it's been asked before, but in uh, the relation, the bad luck with relationships that Will has, was it a revenge tactic for the bad luck that Sam had on Stargate? Okay. <laughs> yes? <laughs> We don't speak Kiwi. Uh... I'll speak Australian, hang on. <laughs> now, or the, the bad relationship, the bad relationships that Will has, is it revenge for the bad relationships that Sam had? Yes! So I'm paying for someone else's sins? <laughs> Yes! Racist. <laughs> Racist. Fair dinkum. Yeah, fair dinkum, mate. Right. Wrong country. Wrong country. They get bad. There's one more question I think there is. Oh! Hi. Um, my question Ray. is about... Um, my question is about Magnus and women in film, and it's rare to see a woman who never really had to prove why she was in charge, and we never really, like we saw Sam have to do the speech about yeah, her part being on the inside. <laughs> yeah. but we never really saw Magnus give that speech other than in the past, kind of, but I love that Magnus never did that. I love that she was just there and no one really said anything. Yeah. Was that discussed, or did you discuss with the writers about not doing that? Or I just love that, and I wondered if that was a part of your idea. <laughs> I, I love that aspect of it. Magnus, after all. You have seen her footwear, right? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> it was never discussed. It was never an issue. It was always that Magnus was just Magnus. She never had to prove it. She never had to say it. Like, I, I would love for that to be the case for all women in this industry eventually to not go, why are you a woman producer? Just go, hey, you, genderless person. I said that in, in our, my press conference earlier today. It's like, I would love for there to be such a level playing field that no one ever asks that question. But uh, with Magnus, he just... Yeah. I hope we live to see it. <laughs> it would be really nice. Thank you. You're wearing a Warehouse 13 shirt, darling. You're in the wrong place. <laughs> They're over there. Ah. Here, here. That's so nice. <laughs> you would think, right? Yeah. 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 Right on the right <laughs> Sci-fi show would be nice, but no. <laughs> Warehouse 13 would be great because I love those guys. Eddie! 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 E
the Ellen Show. Huh? Yeah. Ellen. <laughs> so if anybody wants to start a new move about that. Yeah, Eureka's done. So. They're done. They just finished filming yeah. last week. Yeah, that's it. It's done. Leave the actors oh, on. Yeah. I saw Colin so Ferguson the crying in the hole over there. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we need to get Colin Let's on the show. Let's get Colin on the show. <laughs> Little known, little known fact, Colin Ferguson, I, I uh, acted with Colin Ferguson on his very first acting job. Really? It's called Rowing Through. He, he was the lead in, in this, it was about Olympic rowers. It's very cool. He was the lead, it's good. We'll talk about those websites. Um, <laughs> he had a heck of a stroke, let me tell you. We'd like to thank you all for coming to the sanctuary. <laughs>